Welcome to Big Energy. I'm your host, Cassie Underwood, here to give you a dose of that good energy and talk with people who do it best. Each week, I bring you the knowledge we need to be the forces of nature we came here to be. All right, friends, I know you thought I wasn't going to make it this Monday, but I'm coming in just under the wire with a podcast episode that means a lot to me and is coming straight from the heart. So recently I've seen some posts and just some rumblings from people who are critiquing marketing courses about making money and uh, who are also just kind of critiquing the whole world around spirituality and money. And these are nothing new, but they've just been something that I have felt more deeply recently. I really want to add to this conversation, particularly to any of you who may be vulnerable to seeing these kinds of posts or hearing these kinds of rumblings, wherever you're consuming it, whether it's another podcast or whatever it is, and are making yourself wrong for wanting to make more money, at least in my experience, if you are looking into making more money, then you're probably part of a population who needs more money, who need to own, who who need to own their own value in a world that has devalued them or told them that they're not the quote unquote real deal if they care about money. I'm talking particularly about the creatives, the healers, the teachers, the activists out there, those who have been expected for thousands of years to work for essentially free. And we're coming to a point now where a lot of people have said, fuck this, our work is incredibly valuable. We create culture. People are receiving deep healing from this. And that is just as valuable as a doctor who makes $300,000 a year or a lawyer. All the work that we do is just as valuable and we deserve to be fairly compensated for that as well. Nobody is going to give you permission to make more money if you fall into one of these categories, particularly if you're choosing yourself. You can be the kind of creative who, let's say you're an actor and you decide to make it because you were chosen. That's possible. But you might also be a kind of creator who chooses yourself. And if that's true, if you're creative, if you're a healer, if you're choosing to create your own business, then you are choosing yourself. And when you choose yourself, nobody gives you permission You have to go and create it all yourself. You have to name that price. And I remember how big of a deal it was when I was like moving from teaching at, you know, a fancy university where I loved the sparkle of being able to say that I taught there, but I made just next to no money. And I was patching together literally like 10 jobs. I wish I were exaggerating, running all around New York City. Meanwhile, trying to create art, trying to write my book, and I was just exhausted all the time, sleeping never, and really burnt out. And so for me to choose myself meant that I've had to say goodbye to a lot of these things that had a lot more sparkle to them, where I wasn't getting paid anything, but I was getting you know, a fancy name associated with it. Because when you are an artist or a teacher or a creative or a healer, if other people are choosing you, you're probably not getting paid very much. If you choose yourself, then you get to name your own rate. And that is, for me, what that meant was breaking down centuries of conditioning and patriarchal influence because so many of the people who have been creatives and who have fallen under these categories through the years have been women. And not just women, but people of color, gay people, queer folks, and 
just people who have been devalued in other ways and now, you know, want to be fairly compensated and so often just aren't. So we have to choose ourselves and create our own businesses. So what's been interesting to me has been that recently when I've seen these little critiques floating around of those who are either marketing how to make more money as if that's like something to be trivialized or whether it is about monetizing something that previously has been undervalued. I just find it to be really interesting that people who are making those critiques are making a lot of money already and have often been either privileged in the way that they were incarnated on this planet, you know, white men, or they are people who have no doubt had to go on their own journey of overcoming their past and transforming their own money mindsets and who know damn well that making more money is not ultimately about the money. And so as much as I respect these little critiques I've seen floating around, and and I too, you know, as we all should grapple with questions of capitalism and the commodification of spirituality and creativity and healing and teaching and activism and all of this, uh, the people who would be most vulnerable to the desire for money from these pursuits being trivialized, being made wrong, are people who already feel really bad about wanting more money. And so what I wanted to do for you, if you're already feeling bad about wanting to make more money and then you see someone you admire posting about uh, how stupid it is or making fun or saying that it's wrong and you really just need to be heart centered as if there's some dichotomy between being heart centered and making a lot of money if it made you feel even worse to see some of this, then I want to elevate the conversation for you. I want to elevate the conversation and the desire for money for anyone who might be wanting to understand how to make more money and simultaneously cringing at yourself for wanting it or who feel really bad for wanting it or who feel like you're doing the wrong thing for wanting it. I'm here to release you from the cringe and release you from the fear factors around desiring more money. There is nothing to cringe about. There is nothing to be embarrassed about. And there's nothing to fear. My listeners come from all different backgrounds, whether you come from having next to nothing financially or from a middle class background where you were raised to believe the financial struggle was respectable, or if you came from like a famously wealthy family And my clients over the years have fallen under all of these three categories and much more. We all have a relationship with money. We all have fears and desires and resentments around money. It's all completely normal. Like everyone, I came from a family with a lot of financial stress, a public school teacher and a chronic gambler. So I believed that making more money was probably not going to happen or was going to get me into a lot of trouble. When I decided to make more money, it was really a decision to break free of the way that I was raised. I was actually pregnant with my son when I decided to build my business, choose myself and make money and stop with the whole like getting by on peanuts because I just didn't want to raise him the way that I had been raised. And chances are your desire for money is not about greed or selfishness or even about all the things that money can buy and resolve for you. Whoever says that money can't buy happiness was full of shit and either had never experienced money or didn't want you to know that. (laughs) So money can't buy deep core happiness, you know, that kind of like everlasting fulfillment but it can buy a lot of peace. I'm talking about the level of peace that you get from not having to worry about a major catastrophe and being able to afford to get your way out of something that is challenging or to make a mistake. There are so many people in America and on this planet who can't afford 
to make a mistake because a mistake would be so detrimental to their finances. So I believe that making money is a really good thing that you get to do it, that there's nothing to cringe about or feel bad about. Anybody who's making you feel like you should cringe is full of privilege. Chances are your desire for money is not about greed or selfishness. Money is simply meant to be a catalyst on your path of personal growth or even spiritual growth. The same way that getting sober is part of people's personal growth path or spiritual path, the addiction is the catalyst in that regard. The struggle that you have with money, whatever that struggle is, whether it is making your own money, maybe you have access to money, but you just can't make your own money, or maybe you just can't make money and you're struggling and it sucks, or you're not able to get to the next level, maybe you're already making $350,000 a year, but you really want to make a million because you know that that's where the impact is. Whatever your struggle is, it is a catalyst and it's leading you to a door. And behind that door is a lot of desires that are really noble and good, but you have to listen to it. You can't listen to the voices from outside who, for whatever reason, really love to make money a problem and who are so often privileged voices. So if you follow that desire and stay true to your personal growth course or your spiritual growth course around money, and by spiritual, by personal growth, I mean the looking inward, the truth-seeking, the, the parts that require courage to step outside of your comfort zone, and the five elements that I'm about to share with you here, it serves not just you and your collection of Jimmy Choo's or whatever, but it really serves all of humanity. So let's talk about five reasons why you might want to make more money that are really good. So one is a desire to be of service and make impact. So if you want to make money, you will have to show up in public again and again and say, this is me and I am offering something. Whether it's a service like being a consultant, art, performance, or comedy, yoga classes, whatever it is, you will have to be visible if you want to be of service. When I wasn't charging anything for my work, it let me off the hook for a lot particularly professionalism. I didn't have to operate at a certain level when I wasn't charging enough money. I didn't have to be a true professional and I didn't stand a chance of making real impact like I wanted to. If you want to make more money, you will have to up level your professional game. So in the beginning, it's like, how about getting a professional email that isn't like gangbang 1999 at Hotmail you know, like you just like that level of I'm actually going to own that I'm doing something here <laughs> and it's a real thing. And then it's like create an actual offer and you charge us an appropriate amount of money for that offer. That amount of money should ultimately be able to create enough revenue to sustain a business. And then you eventually raise your rate and you deliver value at an even higher level. You build out systems, you learn to delegate, you hire a team, you fire team members, you tighten up your team, you do marketing and branding. And all of this is in the service of making a positive and maybe even profound impact on the lives of others. So this is a really good reason to make money. And if you want more money, you will always have to continue to be of service and make more impact no matter where you are in the game. So don't lose the desire to make more money because that desire will call you to higher and higher levels of delivering, of being a professional, and ultimately of being of service. The next desire is a desire to be free. So we make money so that we don't have to think about money. We can say yes to what we want. We don't have to think about whether we can do that thing or can afford that thing. We can just say, yes, I really desire to do that thing. I know that it's going to create value, create memories, and I'm just going to go for it. When we don't have a lot of money, we're often living in the gray. And what that means is that we don't know what's coming in and what's going out financially. And yet we are constantly making decisions based on money. So for me, I was like, I was always thinking about money, but I was never sitting down and working with my money when I didn't have any money. 
I wasn't doing enough thinking of like, I could charge something for this or I could create something that I really want to offer. Nope, I'm just going to have to do this thing I don't really want to do because that's just what life is. And yet I couldn't do most of the things I wanted to do. It was like, no, I guess I can't afford to go to that. I have dear friends whose wedding I didn't attend because I just couldn't afford to. I have a friend whose parent passed away and I couldn't afford to fly to the funeral. And I've never even told her that because it's just so like ridiculous, you know, like being able to say, yes, I will go and support you. And this like profoundly life altering moment, I couldn't afford weddings and funerals. Do you relate to that? And that that's not freedom. That's not being able to be of service. The desire to make more money is often a desire to be able to say yes to your life, to stop making decisions based on whether you can afford it, to let go of that underlying static about money in your brain. Because when we're not thinking consciously about our money and creating our money, we are almost always thinking about money, paradoxically. When I'm in a high financial vibration, I'm just clear on my money. I know what's going in, what's going out. I know what I can afford. And that makes me feel really free. It makes me feel free to be able to say yes to what I want in life. I know that you want to be able to say yes to more without even having to think about it much. The third desire that's really good and noble around money is a desire to share. This one is very simple. I like being able to buy things for people. I like to give things to people. I can't do that if I am broke. Can you? No. We can not We can give things that we already have, but you know, you want to go treat all your friends to dinner? You want to be able to throw a really fun party for your kids, for your friends, for your partner? You can't do that if you don't have money. You can do it, but you'll go back to not being free, right? You won't be able to do exactly what you want to do and give at the level that you want or to share at the level that you want if you don't have money. So money is really good for your relationships. The fourth reason, this will sound really crazy to people who already have this, but if you don't have this, you're going to get what I'm talking about. The desire to be compensated. So if you've been fairly compensated for whatever you do for a living, this is going to be like, what? But for far too many people, particularly women, particularly those who identify as creatives, healers, teachers, activists, far too many of us reach our 30s and even our 40s and 50s barely surviving on chump change And we have never made our own real money from our own work. Far too many of us go through life without, like, really without being compensated for our work. You may have Ivy League degrees. You may have had fancy positions, but you may never have been truly compensated for your work because you have not called the shots or maybe you've been too afraid to charge your value. You may have manifested cool trips, clothes, inheritances, or even a spouse who supports you, but if you have a deep yearning to make money from your own creations on this planet, that is real. Listen to that. That was one of the deepest things calling me was to actually experience being compensated for my own value and my own work, to feel that feeling, to own my worthiness. If this resonates with you, you will have to develop yourself into a person who commands money for your own work without anyone giving you permission, being visible, even if you get ignored or misunderstood, develop unfuckwithable boundaries, particularly around your work, and become the woman that you dreamt of becoming. That is what's behind the desire to be compensated financially. It's not really about money. It's about feeling valued and developing yourself into a person who commands it. And finally, this is the fifth really great noble reason to desire money that money is a catalyst for is to create fairness and equality. We need more money in the hands of women. It's really just that simple. When women have money, we use it for justice. 
today is Juneteenth. And a really good way to support Black Americans on Juneteenth and every other day. (laughs) Juneteenth is going to end in like 20 minutes. And we can still do this every fucking day. I don't care when you listen to this. Like, let's just do it every day. Support Black-owned organizations and creators. Buy books from indie bookstores written by people of color. And things like that. It's really, really that simple. When women have money, we do good things with it. We create a world of fairness and equality. Be that woman. And you will never feel bad about wanting more money. When you do good shit with your money, when you create a world of justice and equality and fairness, you're not going to care who trivializes the fact that there are lots of people marketing making more money right now because you're going to know what you do with it. You're not going to care what anybody says or if somebody's like, we shouldn't monetize spirituality. Why not? Why not? But we monetize everything else and you're telling me that we should be doing emotional labor for free it sounds like patriarchy wrapped up in being anti-consumerist culture to me but you know you can decide for yourself so if you want more money dig into that why do you want more money what will it do for you what will it do for others and then once you've established that for yourself and you have owned it completely Just really own your desires because it's totally okay if you want to save the planet and you also want Jimmy Choo's. That's fucking fine. You get to have all of it. If you want reparations for slavery and put your money behind that and you also want to have some nice things, that's okay. You get to have all of that. You just need to learn how to make the money and you can do it. Just like I did. I did not come from a place where I had any financial education for my family growing up in terms of making more money. That was not at all part of the conversation. I learned a lot about money that I had to unlearn. And most of us do. That's not because I came from anything crazy. It's just like we all have to if we want to make more money. So you get to do the work. You get to own your desires, your reasons for wanting more money, and you get to do it just like I did. I am teaching a free training on Tuesday, June 20th at noon Eastern Standard Time. It is called Finally Make Real Money, Road to Seven Figures for Lady Entrepreneurs and Business Owners. And if you, by the way, are listening to this and it's past Tuesday, June 20th, I want you to go to the website anyway. It's CassieUnderwood.com forward slash make money. Go to CassieUnderwood.com forward slash make money and get the replay for finally make real money. Road to seven figures for lady entrepreneurs and business owners. In this training, you are going to define and design the juicy life of your entrepreneurial and creative, romantic, outrageously self-expressed wet dreams. You're going to clarify your financial goals and learn what's been stopping you from reaching them. Ignite your passion and drive so you wake up in the morning psyched to be alive. I will tell you, I cannot make more money unless I fucking love what I'm doing. And if I don't love what I'm doing, I will get stuck financially. That's a beautiful thing. I am very grateful for whatever the universe was doing when the universe created that Cassie Underwood has to have passion to make more money. (laughs) Cassie has to enjoy what she's doing to make more money. So that's probably true for you too if you're listening to this. You get to make more money doing what you love and being psyched to be alive. You're gonna learn all about that in this training and how to do it. You will also learn five tools you need to launch yourself into a new vibrational frequency around money and to attract that juicy life for yourself. And you are going to pave your road to seven figures with my step-by-step map. So you're gonna find out where are you on your journey and where do you need to go next? Don't miss this, you guys. As you hopefully now understand having listened to this, it's not about the money. It's about your self-expression. Making more money is about your self-value. You're really knowing yourself deeply and sharing boundlessly. Sharing, giving, creating, being part of justice, having 
something to give to yourself and others and filling your well. Like this is so much more than about the money. Money is just little coins, just little pieces of paper. It's nothing. <laughs> it's it's the journey of getting there and who you become along the way that is everything. And every time that I go to a next level, I'm going to a next level right now financially. So I'm in it with all y'all. I'm in that like, oh no, I'm going to have to take risks. I'm going to have to shake some shit up. I will also be sharing all about the Maverick Woman, which is my mastermind for women who want to make money and be fully self-expressed. I know how lonely and weird it can feel when you decide to make money. If you've been in a community of activists and artists and healers and spiritual folks, like a lot of people may feel triggered by the fact that you have decided to make money. Um, I've gotten really used to triggering people like between between making more money and being more fully self-expressed like whoops you're definitely going to trigger some of your besties and your family and it's so so important to be surrounded by a community of women who get it who are on the same path and who can support you into setting yourself up to succeed with this. It is a treacherous road and you can do it just like so many other incredible women who have come before you. You are one of them. If you're listening to this podcast right now, then you belong. Whether you decide to join us or not, you belong on the path of making more money and it's going to serve so many people. And when you really commit to it, you won't even believe how your life changes. Oh, I love you and I will see you all next week. That was another episode of Big Energy with me, your host, Cassie Underwood. Were you into it? Go ahead and click the subscribe button and leave a review. You can also find me online at CassieUnderwood.com. See you next time.